This is Oliver, and this is Oliver's roadmap to success. Oliver was rescued from the Humane Society um, about a month and a half ago, and he'd been turned over by a few people before back to the Humane Society, but he's actually an excellent dog, so if you had him before and you didn't take him, you really missed out. Um, he is about two and a half years old, and he's a mixed breed. Um, he lives in an apartment, and he's had some issues with maybe a little bit of barking, um, but some of the stuff we went over today is going to be very helpful for him. So the first thing we talked about today was exercise and his guardians have already been doing an outstanding job of exercising him. Um, the only uh, recommendations that I want to make are to let, make sure he's sniffing on his walks. That's excellent. Continue to let him do that. Um, and add some food dispensing toys to the mix. He really likes the mental stimulation that we've been providing throughout the session. So for him, um, the snuffle mat, great option. We really like the Omega paw treat dispensing ball. Um, there's all sorts of different food puzzles out there. I have about six different food dispensing toys for my dog. Um, I get a couple, just like three, to have total that you can rotate through. Um, avoid any puzzles that are like labeled easy. He'll have it figured out in a day and then he'll just tip it over to get the food out. Uh, but stuff like that for him is gonna be very beneficial. He enjoys it. Um, the next thing we talked about were rules. And again, you guys killed it. You had a whole bunch of rules for him. So the only uh, modifications I'd like to make are making sure that he's not allowed on the, the, uh, the furniture out in the living room, um, it's specifically the couch that's in front of the window so that he doesn't get the opportunity to practice barking at the people that are passing by. In that, or on that note, I would also get some of that film. Um, they make it, it's at Lowe's, Home Depot, places like that. It's basically a film that you can put on the window that's gonna block the view of the things. Um, you can use white paper as well, but all we're looking for here is to break the association. Dogs learn through association. So if he thinks his bark is what's continuing to get the dogs to move, or maybe he thinks it's getting them to come into play with him, um, we want to take that valid or the, the visual validation out of the equation. So at least the, the patio door and then the door above the white chair or the window above the white chair, I would at least do it there. Do it so that he can't see out in those spots. So if he does happen to get up on the furniture, he's not able to practice the behavior that he's been engaging in. Um, other rules, keeping them out of the kitchen while you're cooking and while you're eating. The eating part's already happening, but while you're cooking, we want to work up too. So practice that boundaries exercise that we went through today. Um, at first, just toss a couple treats behind you. Then I would work up to, and only do that for a few days. Then work up to getting out your pots and pans while you're having him practice being outside of the kitchen. Um, then measure out your ingredients. Get everything ready and then go through the process of cooking. Um, for... You want to make sure you practice the out command though. For the next couple days, every few hours, I would practice the out all the way along the border at the kitchen and then at the doorways in your home. So practice the out and you can name the rooms if you want. So you can name bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, living room, out. Um, out's going to be the same. It's always going to mean leave the area you're in. So you can practice out. Say you want to sit at your, um, your uh, table and eat out here in the living room. You can practice out going off of the carpet and onto the hard floor. So he can understand that in both capacities. So if you want to sit out here and eat and you need him to leave you alone, he can understand out going into the kitchen as well. So practice in both directions here and in your bedroom. So out can mean leave the, the bedroom as well. Um, and leashing up calmly. So when you're leashing him up to take him out to go to the bathroom or go for a walk, make sure that the whole process that he's leashing up or that you're leashing him up, he's remaining calm. So if you get your shoes on and he starts to get too excited, sit down on the couch, let him calm himself all the way back down and then start the process again. Calm-er is not calm. So if you are on a scale of one to 10 for energy, if he's at a six, we want him to calm down to about a one or a two. If he's at six and he calms down to a four, it doesn't take very long to get back to that six again. But if he's at six and he calms down to a one or a two, it does take a, a while to get back to that six. So we wanna practice everything where he's remaining calm calm before he gets his food to eat for breakfast and dinner, calm before he gets to go out for the walk. Um, we talked about petting with a purpose today. So make sure that anytime he's getting any attention whatsoever, he has to sit before he gets the attention. That is not just for you two, but for anybody else that he comes into contact with. So if he's meeting a new person outside, um, I for a very long time carried treats around with me. Every new person that my dog met, I gave them a treat. I'd have them ask my dog to sit and I'd make sure that Lucas saw me giving the person the treat. I'd have them ask him to sit, and then when he did does sit, give him the treat and then pet him. What that shaped was he likes to sit, for, He now he knows he has to sit for people, but that shapes that behavior. It teaches the dog to sit before they, or before they get greeted by humans. 
Um, passive training we talked about. So marking the dog or marking the, or rewarding in the moment what, the, what we like from the dog. So one of the things I really want you to work on this with him with is settle. So if he is calm and he's laying near you and he's on the ground, hopefully soon, um, what I want you to do is pet him slowly from the nape of his neck to, he's down here, to the base of his tail, and you're going to associate a word. I use settle, settles, and chill, relax, but you're going to practice this only while he's calm for the next three months to teach him what this means. Now, eventually, you'll be able to use settle as the command word that means calm down. Um, you want to make sure that uh, you're practicing it when he's actually calm, though, for a while before you incorporate the word as a command. Um, you can use this to teach any cute thing he does. So David taught his dog Quest to grumble this way. Quest used to grumble like woo 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 at David to try and get attention from him. Um, and so he marked it with the word grumble. And now he uses this and grumble as a way to get da or to get Quest to talk in videos uh, for, for us for all of our birthdays. So we get these cute, adorable videos of Quest grumbling at us for our birthdays. And it's very uh, passive training is how he taught it. So if there's anything cute that you realize he does, um, you can train him to do it on command through passive training. Um, he has awesome guardians who have taught him a lot already. Um, he knew several of the commands that I would normally teach already, but we did work on kennel training. I'm going to send you the videos that cover the kennel training exercises that we would normally do in puppy class. Um, for the first couple days, let's do in, just do in and out. So first pick a new word. Um, something like Fenway would be good. Um, and then I want you to practice the in and outs of in the kennel. So throw a treat in when he licks it up, say Fenway when he leaves. So you don't need to say anything, but you can say a, a leave command. Um, but what we want is to just practice in and out where there's no, nothing blocking him into the kennel. It sounds like in his last home, there may have been some extended periods that he spent in the kennel. So we want to change the word in order to create a better association to the kennel. And um, we want to practice where he's not being blocked in just so he can learn that the kennel is not a bad place. We're really rewiring his association to the kennel with this exercise. So in and outs um, for the next two days. And then I want you to start blocking the kennel door and waiting for that sit. Remember not to tell him to sit, wait for it. And the video will explain the whole thing. Uh, we want to get to the point where he can spend, by the time you go back to our, or us, all of us, go back to normal lives, we want him to have about a good half hour, 45 minutes under his belt where he's hanging out in there. When you do get him to the period where you can get him to stay in there past a couple minutes, um, even past 30 seconds without getting too excited or freaking out if that's what he's doing. Um, I didn't really get to see that. But I would start distracting him so you have a calm. Stuff that with something. They also make topples. There's all different kinds of stuff or toys you can stuff with food. Um, I have a few marrow bones that I stuff with food uh, and then freeze them. Uh, when he does that, any this is for you, so it doesn't matter. But when he does that, don't do anything. Just freeze, look up, cross your arms. When he gets off, have him sit and then pet him. I can't shake. Um, <laughs> but uh, practice that kennel exercise. Distract him when he gets past 